introduction to uh, nervous system so uh, what is nervous system uh, nervous system is the system uh, that is responsible for controlling all the activities of the body um, as uh, we have discussed it in the endocrinology that uh, there are two main systems which are involved in the coordination and regulation of the body activities uh, one which is uh, responsible for short term regulation and the other that is responsible for uh, long term regulation so the first and quick response uh, that is attained by a system in our body and that is nervous system and uh, nervous system uh, is responsible for controlling almost all the activities of the body it is uh, quicker than the other control systems in the body uh, namely the endocrine system as we have discussed that nervous system is responsible for controlling the body through uh, chemical messengers which are known as neurotransmitters and uh, endocrine system is responsible for controlling the body activities through a second type of uh, chemical messenger that is known as hormone so the difference between the nervous system and endocrine system is both are responsible for the controlling the activities of the body but the mode of activity or the uh, chemical messenger is different the chemical messengers um, through which nervous system act that is a neurotransmitter and the endocrine system is responsible for controlling the activities through hormones uh, primarily the nervous system is divided into two parts so the, the whole nervous system it is divided into two parts central and periphery central the center part of the nervous system the main part of the nervous system that is central nervous system and peripheries at the peripheries the neurons are involved so that is classified as peripheral nervous system so there are two uh, two divisions of the nervous system central nervous system and peripheral nervous system um, this is the division of the nervous system uh, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system um, composed of brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system uh, is divided into two um, divisions that is autonomic nervous system and Uh, somatic nervous system so uh, autonomic nervous system as we have discussed all uh, this peripheral nervous system already that this peripheral nervous system is divided into two portions autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system autonomic that is involuntary in action and somatic that is voluntary in action autonomic nervous system is further divided into two portions uh, sympathetic division and parasympathetic division sympathetic division that is con that is responsible for controlling the body through a neurotransmitter that is noradrenaline and parasympathetic nervous system that is responsible for controlling the body activities through a neurotransmitter that is acetylcholine so uh, central nervous system include brain and spinal cord um, brain and spinal cord is composed of it is formed by the neurons and neuron is a st structural and functional unit of nervous system uh, um, nervous system is uh, composed of neurons and uh, with the neurons there are other cells which are present in the nervous system and these cells are known as uh, neuroglia or these are also known as supporting cells of the nervous system so the structure of uh, brain and spinal cord are arranged into layers uh, which are named according to the color and these are known as gray matter and white matter what is gray and white matter means gray matter is formed by the nerve cell bodies we will discuss in uh, uh, further that the, what is the structure of the neuron so uh, the neuron is composed of uh, a cell body and uh, now fibers these are dendrites and axons uh, so the gray matter is uh, which is present in the central nervous system it is formed by the nerve cell bodies and the proximal part of the nerve fiber the nearest part of the nerve fiber uh, which arise from the cell body uh, and the white matter that is formed by the remaining part of the nerve fibers so uh, in brain white matter is placed in the inner part and gray matter is placed in the outer part so if uh, we see the um, uh, structure of brain so this white matter is placed in the inner part inside part is composed of white matter and uh, gray matter that is composed of uh, cell bodies that is placed in the outer part and uh, in comparison to the brain if we discuss spinal cord the white matter is in the outer part and gray matter is placed in the uh, inner part 
where is brain situated it is situated in the skull uh, and uh, it is continued as spinal cord in the vertebral canal uh, through the foramen magnum of the skull bone foramen magnum is uh, a hole in the skull bone um, through which uh, the spinal cord is connected to the brain so, uh, spinal cord is placed in the vertebral column uh, or it is also known as vertebral canal and this spinal cord and brain is connected through a connection or a hole in the skull bone and that is known as foramen magnum brain and spinal cord these are uh, surrounded by three layers so brain and spinal cord the coverings of the brain and spinal cord are known as meninges as we have discussed all the organs that there is outer cover that is the protective layer of the that organ so there are also protective coverings or layers of the um, brain and spinal cord uh, which are known as meninges and these uh, meninges is composed of three layers uh, that is um, called the outer dura mater middle arachnoid mater and the inner uh, pia mater or it is also known as pia mater the space between the arachnoid matter and the pia mater is known as subarachnoid space and the space that is filled with the fluid uh, which is known as cerebrospinal fluid and the fluid that is present in the brain that is known as csf or cerebrospinal fluid we will discuss uh, cerebrospinal fluid its uh, composition and its function uh brain and spinal cord these are actually uh, suspended in the cerebrospinal fluid so what we have discussed brain spinal cord the connection between the brain and spinal cord the situation of the brain and spinal cord and the protective coverings or the layers which are known as meninges which are uh, present on the surface of the brain and spinal cord and two matter one is known as white matter and the gray matter gray matter is composed of cell bodies and white matter is composed of uh, nerves or other parts of the neuron what are the parts of brain brain consists of three major divisions uh, one is known as prosencephalon second one uh, mesencephalon and the third one is known as rhombencephalon prosencephalon uh, it is also otherwise known as uh, forebrain uh, you are familiar with this word forebrain mid brain mid brain and hind brain so the forebrain is known as prosencephalon and it is further divided into two parts um, one is known as telencephalon and the other one is known as diencephalon cephalus word uh, means head or uh, head region so that's why it is telencephalon diencephalon telencephalon include uh, cerebral hemispheres basal ganglia uh, hippocampus and amyloid nucleus these are the parts of the brain and diencephalon consists of thalamus uh, hypothalamus uh, we have discussed this in many uh, systems um, metathalamus and subthalamus so these are the parts of the brain which are uh, classified in this division of the brain that is known as diencephalon so the pro prosencephalon that is forebrain it it is further composed of two parts telencephalon and diencephalon and these structures are present in this um, division next one is mesencephalon which is also known as uh, midbrain and the third one is rhombencephalon or it is also known as hindbrain which is uh, further subdivided into two portion uh, metencephalon and mesencephalon or it is also known as medulla oblongata we have discussed it uh, in respiratory system pons and medulla oblongata so um, metencephalon is formed by the pons and uh, cerebellum and mesencephalon or medulla oblongata that is uh, midbrain pons uh, th this is composed of medulla oblongata mesencephalon is composed of medulla oblongata what is midbrain uh, midbrain is the mesencephalon uh we um, we will discuss this brain stem and function of the brain stem what is brain stem as i have discussed earlier uh, what is brain stem it is composed of uh, three parts mid brain pons and medulla oblongata so, so this is uh, mid brain the rhombencephalon which is composed of pons medulla oblongata and cerebellum the two parts of the rhombencephalon and one part of this mesencephalon these three uh, com are together called the brain stem So the, uh, this is um, 
central nervous system what is peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system is uh, formed by the neurons and their processes which are present in all the regions of the body and it consists of cranial nerves arising from the brain and spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord peripheral which is present in the periphery periphery to brain it is formed by neurons and the processes which are present in all the regions of the body the neuronal processes which are present in all the regions of the body because nerve supply is present in all the parts of the body uh, and in, it consists of cranial nerves cranial nerves are those are nerves which arises from the brain and uh, spinal nerves are those ones which arise from the spinal cord so uh, the peripheral nervous system is composed of neurons which neurons two types of neuron one is cranial nerves and spinal nerve cranial which arises from the cranium or the skull or the brain and spinal nerves which arises from the uh, spinal cord and this uh, peripheral uh, nervous system is further divided into two subdivisions uh, somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system somatic nervous system uh, which is concerned with the somatic functions uh, somatic function means which are the voluntary functions uh, and it include the nerves supplying the skeletal muscles as you know that skeletal muscles are voluntary in action and skeletal muscles are those muscles which are connected to the skeleton um, you might have studied it in the anatomy the muscles and classification of muscles i i also have discussed this uh, with you people what is skeletal muscle what is cardiac muscle what is uh, uh, smooth muscle so the skeletal muscles which are voluntary muscles and the uh, nerves which are supplied to the skeletal muscles these are somatic muscles somatic uh, nerves and the function of the somatic nerve is voluntary in action and somatic nervous system is responsible for the muscular activities and movement muscles are which are attached to the skeleton and these are responsible for the muscular activities and the body movements what is autonomic autonomic nervous system which is concerned with the regulation of visceral or vegetative function viscera means the internal structures of the body inner organs of the body which are involuntary in action so the autonomic that is involuntary uh, in action that is responsible for the regulation of body activities of the visceras or the inner organs so it is also known as vegetative or involuntary nervous system autonomic nervous system consists of two division one is sympathetic division and other one is parasympathetic division generally uh, if we uh, discuss the function of the nervous system uh the then general function of the nervous system is it gathers the information from both uh, inside and outside of the body that is the sensory function uh, what is sensory function means it is responsible for sensations uh, the stimulus is received by the um, brain and uh, <coughs> spinal cord <coughs> so uh this is the general function of the nervous system that uh, it uh, this is the sensory function that it gathers the information uh, which type of information the information from inside of the body and outside of the body outside of the body through the environment uh, and inside the body uh, what is taking place place inside like uh, as we have discussed the regulation of blood pressure that is um, either increase or decrease so that is a sensation that is an information that is received by the brain uh, through a sensory neuron through receptors uh, as we have discussed that pyroreceptors are responsible for the regulation of uh, blood pressure so um, receptor then sensory neuron then the information uh, in the form of impulse goes to the brain so this is the sensory function of the uh, nervous system the second function is it transmits the information to the processing area of the brain and spine so uh, when the information has been gathered then it is processed so this information should be transmitted to the processing area the different parts of the brain are responsible for regulation of different functions it transmits the information to the processing areas of the brain and spine then it processes that information in the brain and spinal cord so uh, if the processing area is present in the brain or it is present in the spinal cord so that um, information that has been transmitted to the processing area that is then processed uh, in the brain or spinal cord and that is known as integration function of the uh, nervous system 
after the integration uh, it uh, send impulses or it send in information uh, to the effector organ whatever the uh, organ may be it may be a muscle it may be a gland or any other organ uh, so uh, the brain and spinal cord or the nervous system is responsible for sending the information to the effector organ so that uh, they can respond appropriately and this function is known as motor function so it control uh, and coordinate all the essential functions of the body uh, including all other body systems allowing the body to maintain homeostasis or uh, its delicate balance all uh, this uh, coordination and regulation is responsible for the maintenance of homeostasis in our body the the nervous system is responsible for controlling and the coordination of different essential functions of the body uh, including all the other body systems it is responsible for controlling all the other body systems and after all after this uh, it allow the body to maintain the homeostasis or its delicate balance uh, what is neuron a uh, neuron is the structural and uh, functional unit of the nervous system and uh, it is actually responsible for transmission of impulses so neuron is the basic functional cell of the nervous system what are the parts of neuron we will discuss it in detail in the next uh, slides parts of neuron consist of dendrite which receive the stimulus and carries the impulses towards the cell body then cell body which contain nucleus uh, and most of the cytoplasm then axon that is the long process or the fiber which carries impulses away from the body uh, schwann cells uh, the cells which are present on the nerve you know, fiber these are responsible for the production of myelin sheet and on the basis of this myelin sheet we classify nerve fiber into uh, myelinated nerve fiber and unmyelinated nerve fiber or it is also known as a fatty layer in the peripheral nervous system myelin sheath that is a dense lipid layer uh, which insulate the axon actually this is responsible for the insulation what is insulator that does not allow the um, movement of current or movement of electric charges so it is a type of insulator and it is responsible for the insulation of axon uh, which make the axon look uh, gray uh, then uh, nodes of ranvier Uh, nodes of ranvier are actually the gaps or nodes in the myelin the gaps between this myelin sheath is known as uh, nodes of ranvier and impulses travel from the dead dendrite to the cell body and then to the axon this is the typical structure of a neuron uh, this is the cell body of the neuron containing a nucleus these are the short processes which are known as dendrites through which impulses are received by the neuron this is axon the long process and uh, the axon is this axon is covered by a myelin sheath this is myelin sheath uh, the gaps these are the gaps between the myelin sheath which are known as nodes of ranvier and these are the axon terminal this hole is axon and this these are the axon terminal the short uh, branches of the axon which are known as axon terminals actually these axon terminals are responsible for the release of neurotransmitters or the neurotransmitter is stored in the axon terminals mm, there are three types of neuron sensory neuron which bring message to the cns motor neuron which carry message from the cns and uh, interneurons which are present between the sensory and the motor neuron in the cns Uh, here you will see in the diagram um, these are the sensory neurons this is motor neuron and these are the interneurons what is impulse impulse uh, impulses uh, a stimulus is uh, a change in the environment with sufficient strength to initiate a response what is stimulus stimulus is that a uh, change in the environment which is sufficient which have the sufficient uh, strength uh, to initiate a response excitability is the property of the uh, neuron as we have discussed these uh, some of the properties in the cardiac muscle fiber that is the ability of the neuron to respond to that stimulus what is stimulus it is a change and 
to this change neuron will respond the response of the neuron is known as excitability uh, to the stimulus and uh, convert it into a nerve impulse same is the case uh, with as we have discussed in the cardiac muscle fiber that a stimulus will uh, cause the cardiac muscle fiber to excite and what is excitability that is a response to a stimulus after the response to a stimulus action potential is generated so uh, this uh, excitability is response to the stimulus and this response is converted to a nerve impulse what is nerve impulse that is action potential that has been generated in the nerve fiber or all nothing do all are non phenomena as we have discussed in the cardiac muscle fiber that the stimulus is either strong enough to start the impulse or if the stimulus is having the strength strong enough to start the impulse so it will start the impulse or it will not start the impulse if the strength of that stimulus is in advocate impulses are always the same strength along a given neuron and they are self they have self propagation once it start it continue to the end of the neuron uh, in only one direction from the dendrite to the cell body and then to the axon so and the propagation the impulses are generated and these impulses are then propagated move from one side to the un, uh, to the other side that is the unidirectional uh, propagation of the impulse and the nerve impulse causes a movement of fine across the cell membrane of now what is nerve impulse nerve impulse actually it is uh, it is generated because of the movement of ions ions are responsible for the electrical potentials in the body and electrical potential in the nerve fiber as Uh, we have discussed it in the cardiac muscle fiber that how action potential is generated because of the movement of ions so because of the movement of ions um, this action potential is uh, generated across the cell membrane of the nerve cell so this was all about uh, um, introduction to nervous system uh, coming to the neuron Uh, because neuron is the structural and functional unit of the uh, nervous system and all the activities are carried out uh, in the brain and spinal cord through this uh, functional unit that is neuron a neuron it is also known as nerve cell as every organ is made up of tissue and that is made up of uh, cells so oh, what is uh, this what are the cells which are present in the nervous uh, system that is neuron or it is also known as nerve cell which is defined as the structural and functional unit of the nervous system neuron is uh, similar to any other cell in the body as uh, it is similar to any other cell in the body but it has some differences uh, having a nucleus and all the organelles in the cytoplasm but it is different from the other cell by two ways neuron uh, has branches or processes which are known as axons and dendrites and neuron does not have any centrosome these are um, deficient of centrosome so it cannot undergo the division process classification neurons are classified uh, by three different methods depending upon the number of holes depending, depending upon the function and depending upon the length of axon depending upon the number of poles we classify the nerve uh, neuron into three types unipolar bipolar and multipolar unipolar neurons are those neurons which have only one pole means from a single pole both the axon and dendrite arises and this type of nerve cell is present only in the embryonic stage in human being bipolar means the neuron having two poles these are known as bipolar and axon arises from one pole and dendrite arises from the other pole multipolar uh, neurons are those neurons which have many poles one of the pole give rise to axon and all the other pole give rise to dendrite this is the structure of unipolar bipolar and multipolar neuron uh, this is one pole from which dendrite and axon arises the cell body is placed on the side of the uh, neuron this is bipolar neuron having one pole on one side and the other pole on the other side one side is dendrite and the other side is axon this is multipolar neuron from this what this is the area or the cell body the, from one pole axon arises and from all the other poles dendrite arises this is the typical structure of a, a neuron depending upon function Uh, on the basis of function we classify it into uh, two types or either 
three types in some books it is divided into three types as a motor or efferent neuron uh, sensory or afferent afferent and efferent we have discussed it what are the afferent neuron which carry impulses from the sensory area to the brain and what are efferent neurons efferent fibers which carry the impulses from the brain to the effector organ efferent neurons are also known as motor neuron and sensory neurons are afferent neurons motor or efferent neurons are the neurons which carry the motor impulses from the central nervous system to the peripheral effector organ like muscles glands blood vessels etc and generally each motor neuron has a long axon and short uh, dendrite sensory or afferent neurons uh, are the neurons which carry the sensory impulses from the periphery to the central nervous system and generally each uh, sensory neuron has a short axon and long dendrite this is um, uh, the third uh, third classification is mixed neuron or interconnected which are present in between the sensory and uh, motor neuron depending upon the length of axon if we classify it into the length by uh, in depending upon the length of axon so one having short length short uh, axon and other having long axon so it is a golgi type 1 neuron and golgi type 2 neuron golgi type 1 neuron have long axon cell body of these neuron is uh, in different parts of the central nervous system and their axon reach the remote peripheral organ having long axon is golgi type 1 and having short axon is golgi type 2 neurons and the uh, type 1 neurons are present in different parts of the central nervous system and their axons reach the peripheral organ and golgi type 2 neurons are present in the cerebral cortex and spinal cord what is the structure of neuron as uh, i have discussed the structure of the neuron um, having it has cell body uh, which is nerve cell body dendrite and axon so these are the main three parts of the neuron dendrite and axons are actually the processes of the neuron dendrites are short processes and axons are long processes dendrite and axons are usually called nerve fibers the whole is called neuron or nerve cell and this these processes are known as nerve fibers uh, nerve cell body now coming to the main uh, part of the nerve cell or uh, neuron that is nerve cell body it is also known as soma or it is also known as perikaryon it is irregular in shape like uh, any other cell it is surrounded by a mass of cytoplasm it contains cytoplasm but here the cytoplasm is known as neuroplasm uh, which is covered by a cell membrane and the cytoplasm contain nucleus as it is present in the other uh, cell the difference is it contain nasal bodies what are nasal bodies i will discuss it neurofibrils mitochondria and golgi fibril nasal bodies and neurofibrils are found only in the nerve cell and these are not present in the other cells uh, this is the soma or perikaryon uh, you uh, see what are this these are the granular structures which are present inside the soma or in the cytoplasm of the neuron and this these are known as nasal bodies in the center uh, nucleus is placed each neuron has a one nucleus which is centrally placed in the nerve cell body and nucleus nucleus has one or more prominent nucleoli you can see here this is the nucleus and this is nucleoli nucleus does not contain centrosomes it do not contain centrosomes so it cannot divide uh, so the nerve cell cannot multiply like the other cells what are nasal bodies these are also known as nasal granules uh, these are small basophilic granules find find in the cytoplasmic area or the cytoplasm of the neuron and uh, these are named after the discoverer nasal was the scientist who discovered the nasal body so these are known as nasal bodies or these are known as nasal granules which are actually basophilic granules and these are present in the soma and dendrite but not in the axon Uh, and axon hyalog so we can differentiate the two processes uh, by the presence of nasal bodies nasal bodies are present in the dendrites and nasal bodies are not present in the axon hyalog this is the connection of the axon with the cell body is known as axon hyalog and this is the axon so nasal bodies are not present in the axon and nasal bodies are present in the uh, dendrites nasal bodies are uh, called tigroid 
substances uh, since these bodies are responsible for the tigroid or spotted appearance of the soma as these are granules granular structure so these are responsible for the tigroid or uh, spotted appearance of the soma after suitable staining if we stain it as it is a basophilic granule it will stain with the basophilic dye so after staining it appear as a spotted uh, structure and because of this spotted structure it is known as these are known as tigroid substances uh, dendrites are distinguished from the axons by the presence of nasal granules under the how you will differentiate between the two processes either that is a dendrite or axon so it these are differentiated or distinguished because of the presence or absence of nasal granules if nasal granules are present so the process is dendrite and if nasal bodies are not present then that process is known as axon nasal bodies are membranous organelles containing ribosomes uh, so these bodies are concerned with the synthesis of protein in the neuron protein form in the soma are transported to the axon by axonal flow and number of nasal bodies varies with the condition of the nerve during fatigue or injury of the neuron these bodies fragment and disappear by the process called chromatolysis if there is fatigued or injury to the neuron so the nasal body will um, disappear and how it will disappear by fragmentation it will fragment break and disappear and that process is known as chromatolysis the breaking of uh, colored substances chromato means chrome color so it is the disappearance of that colored material from the neuron that is known as chromatolysis granules uh, reappear after the recovery from the fatigue or after the regeneration of the nerve fiber there is property of regeneration but it is only present in the nerve fiber nerve fiber is the axon or dendrites so it can regenerate but if the cell body um, become dead or it uh, it is breaked so uh, it will not regenerate because it do not contain centrosomes neurofibril uh, another thing that is only present in the neuron so these are the thread like structure which are present in the form of network in the soma and now processes presence of neurofibrils is another characteristic feature of the neuron and these neurofibrils consist of microfilaments and micro tubules now, mitochondria it is also present in the soma um, and uh, in axon as in other cells uh, here also mitochondria form the powerhouse of the nerve cell and uh, as you know mitochondria is responsible for the generation of atp so atp are produced golgi apparatus of the nerve cell uh, body it is uh, similar to that of the other cell it is concerned with the processing and um, packing of the proteins into the granules then write the branched process or the short process of the neuron and uh, it is branched repeatedly then right may be present or absent if present it uh, may be one or many in number then right has nasal granules and it also contain neurofibrils then right transmit the impulses toward the cell body and uh, usually then right is shorter than the axon axon is the longer process uh, of the nerve cell each neuron has only one axon uh, each neuron has a number of dendrites and it contain only one axon axon uh, arises from the axon hyloc of the nerve cell body and uh, it is devoid of nasal granules axon extend from a long distance away from the nerve cell body and length of the longest axon is about 1 meter what is the function of neuron it transmits the impulses away from the nerve cell body what is the organization of nerve so each nerve is formed by many bundles or group of nerve fibers uh, each bundle of nerve fiber is called fasciculus so uh, if uh, we see the organization of the nerve one nerve so it is made up of bundle or groups of nerve fibers like this and uh, this is this is now so it contain number of fibers these are number of fibers which are placed in this one uh, neuron or a nerve so this is known as fasciculus each nerve is formed by bundle or group of nerve fibers and each bundle of nerve fiber is called 
vesicules covering of the nerve is the whole nerve is covered by a tubular sheath which is known uh, which is formed by the areolar membrane and this sheath is called epineurium then each fasciculus is covered by another covering that is known as perineurium and each nerve fiber is covered by another membrane that is known as endoneurium this one is known this this is only axon this one this is covered by a sheath that is known as perineurium a number of axons which are combined or bundled in one this is bundle or group of neuron which is known as fasciculus this is the covering of this fasciculus which is uh, known as endo uh, new, sorry perineurium and one axon is covered by a membrane that is known as endoneurium and this is the outer covering of whole nerve which is known as epineurium so the whole nerve is covered by uh, epineurium it contain many fasciculi and each fasciculus is covered by perineurium and each fasciculus is then composed of many nerve fibers which are the processes mainly axons and this axon is covered by another sheath that is known as endoneurium what is the internal structure of the axon axon uh, having an axis cylinder because it is it has a cylindrical structure round structure axon has a long central core of cytoplasm uh, which which is known as exoplasm the cytoplasm that is present in the axon that is known as exoplasm exoplasm is covered by the tubular sheath like membrane that is known as exolemma the covering of the exoplasm uh, is known as exolemma exolemma is the continuation of the cell membrane of the nerve cell body exoplasm along with the exolemma it form the axis cylinder of the nerve fiber means the whole this whole um, cylinder which is composed of the covering and the inner cytoplasm that is known as axis cylinder inner cytoplasm is known as exoplasm which is present in the axon and the covering of this uh, axon is known as exoplasm exoplasm contain mitochondria neurofibrils and exoplasmic vesicles but nasal bodies are absent in the um, axon and because of the absence of this nasal bodies proteins which are necessary for the nerve fibers because nasal bodies contain ribosomes ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis so proteins are not synthesized in the um, axon so the proteins which are necessary for the nerve fiber these are synthesized in the soma and these are then uh, transported through the axon it flow into the uh, into the axon and these are not Uh, synthesized in the exoplasm after synthesis protein molecules are transported to the axon from the soma by means of axonal flow some neurotransmitter substances are also transported by axonal flow from the soma to the axon and axis cylinder of the nerve fiber is covered by a membrane which is called neuri lemma uh, non myelinated and myelinated nerve fiber non myelinated are those nerve fiber which do not contain myelin sheath which is not covered by the myelin sheath and myelinated nerve fiber are the nerve fibers which are covered by the myelin sheath and these are known as myelinated nerve fiber these are the two nerve fibers one is myelinated and the other is uh, non myelinated this is the non myelinated nerve fiber and this is myelinated nerve fiber myelin sheath is formed so uh, you can see here Uh, this is uh, the axon and uh, the yellowish color uh, is shown by the cytoplasm which is known as exoplasm of the axon this red color covering is known as um, axonal covering and this is known as exolemma and this exolemma this whole this is known as whole axis cylinder this yellow and red it combinedly form an axis cylinder of the axon this axis cylinder is covered by another membrane that is known as neuri lemma this blackish color covering is known as neuri lemma now you can see here uh, this neuri lemma in the unmyelinated nerve fiber is directly connected to the um, exolemma but in the myelinated nerve fiber there is a gap uh, between the exolemma and the neuri lemma and this gap is filled with this myelin sheath 
the and uh, the nerve fiber which is insulated actually this is an insulator so it is insulated by the myelin sheet and it is known as myelinated nerve fiber what is myelin sheet it is lipoprotein sheet and it is responsible for the insulation of the nerve fiber myelin sheet is not uh, a continuous sheet as you can see here there is this is not continuous but it has gaps in between the myelin sheet these are the gaps where the axolem and neurolem are connected so these are uh, this myelin sheet is present um, uh, in this uh, this is not continuous in the nerve fiber but these are present in the regular inter uh, it is absent in at regular intervals and uh, the area where the myelin sheet is not present this area is known as nodes of ren these are the gaps between the myelin sheet and these gaps are known as nodes of ren where well myelin sheet is not present so these are known as uh, nodes of ren here segments of the nerve fiber between the two nodes the segments of the nerve fiber between the two nodes is known as internode this is uh, this is one node this is another node the area which is present in between these two nodes this is known as internode and uh, myelin sheet is responsible uh, for the white color of the nerve fiber myelin sheet uh, what is the chemistry of myelin sheet myelin sheet is formed by the concentric layers of the proteins alternating with the lipids Uh, the lipids are cholesterol lecithin and cerebroside which is known as sphingomyelin this is the composition of the myelin sheet formation how it is uh, formed this myelin sheet the formation of myelin sheet is known as myelogenesis and it is formed by the cells which are present in the nerve fiber and these are known as schwann cells so these schwann cells are responsible for the uh, formation of this myelin sheet myelin sheet around axon is known as uh, the formation of myelin sheet is known as myelogenesis um, and it is formed by the schwann cell in the neuri lemma in the peripheral nerve the myelogenesis start at uh, fourth month of intra intrauterine life and it is completed only in the second year after the birth before myelogenesis Uh, schwann cells of the neuri lemma are very close to the axolemma because uh, before myelogenesis myelogenesis myelinogenesis the nerve fiber is uh, unmyelinated so the axolemma and neuri lemma are in close contact with one another and the schwann cells are also um, in very close proximity to the axolemma as in the case of unmyelinated nerve fiber and the membrane of schwann cell is double layer schwann cells wrap up and round around the axis cylinder in many concentric layers and these concentric layers fuse to produce to produce the myelin sheet but the cytoplasm of the cell is not deposited outermost uh, membrane of the schwann cell uh, remain in the new as neuri lemma and nucleus of these cells remain in between the myelin sheet and the neuri lemma you can see here uh, this is the nucleus of the schwann cell which is present in uh, in the neuri lemma this uh, schwann cell like this it will move around this whole uh, neuron in this uh, circular motion in concentric circle it will form concentric circles and uh, this myelin sheet is produced but it is produced in between these two membrane the axolemma and the neuri lemma and the nucleus of the schwann cell is present in the neuri lemma what is the function of the myelin sheet when myelin sheet is formed around the nerve fiber it is responsible for faster conduction how because uh, as it is insulator so it insulate the uh, whole neuron myelin sheet is responsible for the faster conduction of the impulses through the nerve fiber in myelinated nerve fiber impulses jump from one node to the other node and this type of transmission is known as um, saltatory conduction you can see here uh, if impulse is uh, generated here in the nodes these are the nodes of renvier as you know that this area is an insulator it is not responsible for the conduction of impulse so the uh, the electrical signal that has been generated here because this area is uh, a conductor or it is responsible for the movement of ions it it allow the movement of ions and because of the movement of ions action potential is generated here this action potential which has been generated it will jump from this area to this area 
then from this area to another node that from this area to another node so this a, this impulse will transmit in the myelin sheet in the form of this jump in movement and it cross this area because of the jump from one node to the other node so the impulse is propagated faster in the myelinated nerve fiber and in unmyelinated nerve fiber it will move just like this so it has to cover all the area of the neuron so this type of conduction is slow conduction so it is responsible for the faster conduction and the transmission of the impulses in, is in the form of jumping movement and that is known as saltatory conduction insulating capacity as myelin sheath has an insulating high insulating capacity so because of this quality myelin sheath restrict the nerve impulses within uh, the single nerve fiber and prevent the stimulation of the neighboring one uh, one impulse that has been generated in a single fiber that is restricted to that fiber and it cannot move to another fiber so uh, this is the insulating capacity of the myelin sheath neurilemma it is a thin membrane which surround the axis cylinder it is called neurilemmal sheath or sheath of schwann it is also called sheath of schwann and it contains schwann cells which have flattened and elongated nuclei cytoplasm is thin and modified to form the thin sheath of neurilemma a, one nucleus is present on each inter node of the axon and nucleus is situated between the myelin sheath and the neurilemma in non myelinated fi nerve fiber the neurilemma surround the exo exolemma continuously and in myelinated nerve fiber it cover the myelin sheath at the nodes of renvier where myelin sheath is absent neurilemma invaginate and runs up to the exolemma in the form of finger like process what is the function of uh, neurilemma in uh, non myelinated nerve fiber the neurilemma serve as a covering membrane in non myelinated so it just serve as a covering membrane in myelinated nerve fiber it is necessary for the formation of myelin sheath it is responsible for myelogenesis neurilemma is absent in central nervous system it is only present in the peripheral schwann cells are present in the peripheral nervous system so the neuroglial cells which are known as supporting cells as i have discussed that brain uh, nervous system is composed of two types of cell one is nerve cell and the other is neuroglial cells or neuroglia which are the supporting cells in the brain so um, the supporting cells that is the neuroglial cell a type of neuroglial cell is known as oligodendroglia uh, or uh, oligodendrocyte it is responsible for the myelogenesis in the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system this myelogenesis is uh, carried out by the schwann cells or the neurilemma which are which uh, which are present in the nerve fiber neurotrophins what are neurotrophins these are uh, neurotrophic factors neurotrophins or neurotrophic factors are the protein uh, substances which play an important role in the growth and functioning of the nervous system tissue and uh, these are secreted by many tissues in the body particularly muscles neuroglial or supporting cells which are known as astrocytes and neuron a type of neuroglial cell is astrocyte it is responsible for the secretion of these neurotrophins and neurotrophins are responsible for the growth and functioning of the nervous tissue neurotrophins facilitate the initial growth and development of the nerve cell in central and peripheral nervous system it promote the survival and repair of the nerve cell and it play an important role in the maintenance of nervous tissue and neuronal transmission mm, recently it is found that neurotrophins are capable of making the damaged neuron regrow their processes in vitro and in animal models so this indicate the possibility of reversing the devastating symptoms of Uh, nervous disorders like parkinson disease and alzheimer disease commercial preparations of neurotrophins are used for the treatment of these neuronal diseases uh, what is mode of action of this uh, neurotrophin uh, it act via neurotrophin receptor as in other uh, molecules it will bind with the receptor which are situated on the nerve terminals and nerve cell body and neurotransmitter will bind this with the receptor and it will then uh, initiate the phosphorylation of tyrosine kinase uh, what are the types of uh, neurotrophins one is nerve growth factor as the name indicate it is the protein uh, that is identified as neurotrophin and it is responsible for the growth of the nerve 
it is a neurotransmitter found in many peripheral tissues it is uh, a peptide having 118 amino acid and it is made of two subunit alpha and two alpha subunit two beta subunit and two gamma subunit only the beta subunit have nerve growth stimulating activity and this uh, nerve growth factor promote early growth and development of the neuron its major action is on the sympathetic and sensory neuron particularly the neuron which are concerned with the pain and because of its major action on sympathetic neuron it is also called as sympathetic neuron growth factor which promote the growth of cholinergic neurons in the cerebral hemispheres commercial preparation of this uh, neuronal growth factor uh, extracted from the snake venom and submaxillary gland of the male mouse is used to treat the sympathetic neuronal diseases neuro uh, neuron growth factor play an important role in treating many nervous disorders such as alzheimer disease neuron degeneration in aging and neuron regeneration in the spinal cord injury other uh, neurotrophins are brain derived neurotrophic growth factor which uh, was first discovered in the brain of pig and it is found in human being and human sperm it promote the survival of sensory and uh, motor neuron rising from the embryonic neuronal crest it also protect the sensory neuron in peripheral nervous system and motor neuron of the pyramidal system it enhances the growth of cholinergic dopaminergic and optic nerves cholinergic which contain acetylcholine dopaminergic which contain um, dopamine and optic nerves which are supplied to the uh, eyes so it is suggested that um, brain derived uh, neurotrophic growth factor may regulate the synaptic transmissions and commercial preparation is used to treat the motor neuronal disease others are ciliary neurotrophic factor which is secreted in the peripheral nerves ocular muscles and cardiac muscle and it uh, protect neurons of ciliary ganglion and um, motor neuron glial cell line derived neurotrophic factor which is a potent protective action on dopaminergic neuron and it is used in parkinson disease fibroblast growth factor it is responsible for promoting the fibroblastic growth and it is known to protect the neuron and uh, neurotrophin 3 it will act on the gamma motor neuron sympathetic neuron and neurons from the sensory organ and it also regulate the release of neurotransmitter from the neuromuscular uh, junction and uh, nt3 is useful for the treatment of motor axonal neuropathy and diabetic neuropathy recently a uh, few more substances belonging to the neurotrophin family such as nt4 and nt5 and um, leukemia uh, inhibiting factors are identified and nt4 and nt5 act on the sympathetic neuron sensory neuron and motor neuron Uh, next is classification of nerve fibers so uh, if we classify the nerve fiber the nerve, nerve fiber are classified into different uh, dif by different forms like uh, depending upon the structure distribution origin function uh, secretion of neurotransmitter and depending upon the diameter and conduction of impulses so the first is depending upon the structure depending upon the structure we classify it into uh, two types myelinated and unmyelinated or non myelinated myelinated which contain myelin sheet non myelinated which is which uh, do not contain myelin sheet depending upon distribution somatic and visceral somatic are distributed to the skeletal muscle visceral are distributed to the uh, autonomic nerve fibers depending upon the origin uh, we classify it into two types as cranial and spinal cranial which arises from the cranium or brain and spinal which arises from the spinal cord depending upon the function as sensory or afferent and motor or efferent sensory which are responsible for carrying the sensory impulses from different parts of the body to the brain and uh, these are also known as afferent now motor which are responsible for carrying the impulses from the brain from the central nervous system to the different parts of the body and this is known as efferent now depending upon the neurotransmitter the chemical messenger that is produced or that is synthesized inside the neuron uh, 
uh, we classify it into adrenergic and cholinergic we have discussed it uh, in many topics adrenergic which contain uh, noradrenaline and cholinergic which contain acetylcholine and depending upon the diameter and conduction of impulse so um, uh, a scientist uh, erlanger and gasser classified the nerve fiber into three major types on the basis of diameter or thickness of the fiber and the velocity of conduction of impulses as type a type b and type c fibers among these fibers type a nerve fiber are the thickest uh, fiber and type c are the thinnest so a is thicker b is less thicker and c is more less thicker so type c fibers are also known as uh, type 4 fibers and except type c fiber all the nerve fibers are myelinated type a nerve fiber the first that is the thickest it is further divided into four types as type a alpha type a beta type a gamma and type a delta it is again classified as 1 2 3 and 1 uh, 2 and 3 nerve fibers velocity of the impulse through the nerve fiber is directly proportional to the thickness of the fiber and different type of nerve fiber along with the diameter and velocity of the conduction are alpha beta gamma delta b and c this is the diameter and this is the velocity of the conduction of the nerve fiber so uh, this was all about the introduction of the nervous system and the neuron that is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system its uh, structure its main um, components and um, its classification on the basis of different categories and all the students of section a are uh, absent in this uh, lecture i don't know why uh, they are absent in this lecture